Well, I thought I'd talk about something useful for a change today. How are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the the things every single time I get a brand new Fuji camera. This goes without saying on any camera, but particularly Fuji. As amazing as they are out of the box, there's always a fair few things I always change. There's about 25 actually in total, <laughs> counted on for this video. Absolutely mental. So see how many we get through in the video. But yeah, as amazing as the Fujifilm cameras are out of the box, there are always a lot of things that you need to change. And even if you don't change them, just consider what what I change, why I might change them, and if it's something that doesn't apply to you, then obviously feel free to skip it. So this uh, this is the Fujifilm X-T5, and we're filming on the X-T4, and then this is the Fujifilm X-T X100V. Now, obviously, the button layouts are different on these cameras, X-T4 and X-T5 being similar. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is applicable to most Fuji cameras. Um, in fact, most cameras across the board, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be getting into today. Okay, so the quicker we're into it, the quicker we can get out of it. As I said, there's quite a few. The first one I'm gonna tell you to change on your camera is get all the beeps and whistles and all the lights and everything, the AF beep, the um, the focus assist lamp. So when you assist, assist, the focus assist. It's <laughs> a good one, isn't it? So the light that comes on there, that light there, see that little light? That should be, that's pretty much on every camera. So it doesn't matter what camera you've got, you've got all these little lights on the front there. So anything that beeps, um, I'll forgive you if you're gonna have the, the two second timer, beep on but that is the only beep as soon as i switch the camera on nothing the focusing and everything is completely silent um so it doesn't matter where i'm filming if i'm filming landscape photography i've got peace and quiet and if there's other photographers around me my camera's not pissing them off if i'm doing a wedding then obviously I'll, i've not got to panic where my when my uh, my focus is going beep, beep 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 i have been to a wedding where the photographer's camera was beeping the whole time as well um, and yeah if you're doing astro photography and your camera lights up every time you've got a two second timer it's going to flood everybody else's photograph with light. So just bear those things in mind. The next one on the list is shoot without card. Now don't ask me why, but when you buy a camera, a Fuji camera, it actually will say that it can take a photograph even when there's no memory card in there. So the, one of the first things you need to do is jump in the menu, scroll down and find where it says shoot without card and turn that off. It should actually be the other way around. If you buy a camera and you want whatever reason, I don't know, I can't think of one. Uh, maybe you're tethering, I don't know. Maybe you're, maybe there's no card and you're tethering. I can't think of a reason. But if you should have to opt for that setting to be on. It shouldn't be the other way around. <laughs> don't ask me why it is. But make sure you go into the settings and turn shoot without card off. That way, when you go out and there's no memory card, as soon as I switch the camera on, it's gonna tell you, in fact, if I tell, take the card out of there, it's going to, as soon as, it, as soon as you do that, it's going to say no card in camera. So you, you, you know where you are. You're not going to get out and think, oh, there's no flipping card. Why isn't it? You know. So uh, yeah, turn <laughs> that off for goodness sake. AF release. Now AF, autofocus release, means it, the camera will take a photograph uh, as soon as you press the shutter. So as soon as you press the switcher, that sounds like the ideal scenario, doesn't it? You press a button, it takes a picture, fantastic. But there's actually an option where you can actually have it so that it focuses and it ensures focus. So you press the shutter button, the camera won't take a picture until it's 100% sure, although, you know, with Fuji that's uh, debatable, uh, that it's actually um, acquired focus. Now turn that on because you won't get as many shots, but you will get less misses. Um, now put it on AFC and AFS, so autofocus single and autofocus con uh, continuous. Yeah. So make sure you put that on as well. Even if you don't use it, give it a try and do some practicing with it and just see how you feel because I think that it hits more and um, and you get more keepers with AF priority. What's it called? I don't know, AF focus priority, something like that, anyway. Now, why, again, this is on the, these, are in, these aren't in any particular order at all. I'm just gonna try and get through them as, as quick as possible. So there's no detail really going into these, but do check them out on your camera. Uh, pre-focus, pre-AF, automatic pre-focus, what's it called? Pre-AF, I think it's called. Turn it off, right? As you turn the camera on, it's trying to hunt all the time. Now, they don't come with that on. I, I've never had a camera with it on uh, out of the box, but I don't understand why on earth you would want <laughs> So you turn it on and it's constantly looking for focus. Yeah, just even your, your camera won't have it, but give, give it a go. Maybe it'll work for you. As I said, some of these things will work for you. Some of them, some of them won't. But why on earth you would want that? Let me know in the comments. If that's, in fact, if any of these things that you disagree with, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear an argument for them. Because obviously we all use our cameras differently and it's all, um, it's obviously crucial to understand how our cameras work um, and know how our cameras work and make sure that they work for us. 
I think it's a really good idea to, to actually customize your cameras so that they work for you. You have a good example was when I owned a Sony, it was diabolical. So with the Fuji, I can literally customize all my buttons, which we'll get into in a minute, and make sure that they work for me. So I know if I buy the, X, the X-T7 <laughs> or whatever, the X-T10, that will work exactly the same way. And I'm just familiar with it straight away. All right then, button layout and shortcuts. Now, one of the best things about Fuji uh, cameras, most of them, is the amount of customizable buttons that you've got on this on these little fellas. So I've got my D-pad set up so that I know that if I press that button button there, it goes straight into the timer. So if I'm doing product photography or something where I was HDR bracketing for product, uh, architectural, that sort of thing, I'll go straight into timer there. I haven't got to go looking through the menus. If I go to the top one, I've got my white balance. No, I'm always, um, professionally speaking, if, unless it's a wedding or something like that, it's always manual uh, white balance. So I need to get access to that straight away so I can just go straight into that and then I can I can pre-program pre something with a grey card. If I press left, I can go straight into my ISO auto. Now there's three settings there. You can have, um, I go for one that's low light, one that's average, and then one that's really, really bright. So there's, there's um, obviously depends on what lenses you're shooting, but you need to know what your minimum shutter speed is. And then you can select out uh, of those three what the, most, what the most relevant is, what's gonna guarantee you the sharpest shot for whatever uh, conditions you're in so if I go into if I'm outside in bright light and then all of a sudden I go indoors I can go straight into that I can just press straight into the left then I can t tell it to shoot um, the lowest of one two five or something like that just by going straight in there so it's dead handy that I can access that show away my one of my favorite buttons on on the Fuji camera is the right d-pad because that toggles between what they call natural live view and that's like um, showing you the lovely, lovely pre presets that you can customize in, in your camera. So you get your contrast, you get your, your black and whites and all that. But then your histogram is affected um, with that preview. So you're not getting an accurate histogram. So histogram for me is vital, it always has to be on the camera. But I also like to know that if I press that button while I'm shooting, I can see what the histogram would be like for the raw. So when I go back, even if, even if you press play, you're gonna get a, a JPEG preview, even, even if you're not shooting JPEG. So that natural live view is fantastic for, for uh, high dynamic range scenes and stuff like that. So yeah, it's good. Now I use the AEL button for changing my focus. I'm gonna be quick about it, so there's so much to go through. The uh, I don't use, uh, automatic exposure lock at all, I've never have done because I'm mostly a manual shooter, but I use that for changing my um, my focus modes. And then obviously you've got your Q menu, which we'll talk about in a minute. That button on the top there, which is on the uh, X100V, there is one on there as well. It's one of my favorite buttons as well. It's really, I, I tend to change that button because the X-T5 has gone really, really good for eye autofocus. I've actually got that on um, either eye autofocus or ibis on and off so if, if i'm if i'm on the tripod i can whack that button there straight away and i know that the ibis is can toggle on and off but if i'm if i'm shooting a portrait or i'm shooting something which involves sometimes people sometimes not i can pre-program i could change that button to I, I, iaf which is really really handy i like being able to do that uh, one of my other favorite buttons is on the front there that little button in that gap if you can see that gap that button in there i really really love that because if i'm if I want to chimp, basically I can take a photo. I've got mainly because I'm if I'm doing something with YouTube, I've got something in my hand, or I'm doing I don't know flash or something like that. I can I can basically chimp. I can take a photo and then press that button. So as soon as I press there, it comes up as a play, playback. So I can you know single handedly play. Let me know what you use that button for. I know a lot of people use it for different things, but I really really like it for playback. One of the other things I really love is because you can customize the, the crap out of Fuji cameras, it's unbelievable. You can actually go into the menus and, and when you get the cameras, the, there's so much clutter on there around the actual screen, you've got loads of clutter. So you can go into the menu and you can actually go into, um, I forget what it's called. <laughs> You can go into screen setup, display custom settings, and then tick all the boxes or remove the boxes that you don't want. I try and keep everything as clean as possible. I literally try and keep it so that my my, my screen has literally got everything I want. I don't care about anything else. I want to know how many uh, what my ISO tri exposure triangle is. I want to know how many frames I've got left. I want my battery. Um, I want my focus. Um, D uh, my focus scale if I'm shooting manual or something like that and my histogram as I said I want it as minimal as possible but what you can also do is on that bottom button then press that and you get a nice clean screen so once you've got your, your, your settings all dialed in I know that I can hit that bottom button there which is the same on the X-T4 and the, X and the X-100V and 
it's going to give me a nice clear frame. I can't do that on the Nikon Z7. It really annoys me, but I can on the on the Fuji. And again, you can just toggle through and get the different views. But I really, really like it that it works the same on every single camera. Before we get into the second part of this, I just want to thank everybody that's purchased my zine. And I've actually got two, issue one and issue two was released about just, probably just over a week ago at the time of filming this. And the feedback has been absolutely amazing. So if you've ever, ever enjoyed or taken anything from any of my videos over the years, street photography or landscape, um, a massive way of supporting the channel is by checking out and downloading my new zine. Now the feedback has been amazing. I don't consider myself a writer, <laughs> but it's not just a picture book. It's got a lot of information about how I approach street photography, how I approach that particular image, what, I, what mistakes I made, uh, obviously the settings, the location, and just a bit of our background about the image as well, because what do you learn from just looking at pretty pictures? Huh? So yeah, if you, uh, if you have ever enjoyed any of my videos and uh, learned anything, then please do check out my zine, uh, my new website, as well uh, with the zine I'll put a link in the description so you can have a look at that or if I can get a link to go wherever it goes check out that I've also got a special guest on there as well so do check out his zine it's absolutely fantastic very very educational so I I, I was absolutely thrilled to, to have that zine on, on, the, on the website I'm really really proud of it he's a great friend but he's a super talented street photographer so do check out his zine as well and there's a deal on there where you can download them both but yeah I'll, uh, I'll get back to it Next one is a really important one. It's one of the first ones you should do. Now these aren't, in, as I said, in any particular order at all, but set up your Q menu. So the Q, Q button on the back there, it needs to work for you. You can actually have it so that it's got less, you've got loads of buttons on there at the minute. If you can, if you can see, they've got loads of stuff on there, but you can actually have it so that you've got less on there. I've got, I think my mate Roman's got like four, <laughs> four things on the back there that he uses. So I, I've only got things on the back of the Q menu that I actually need access to straight away every single time. So I really, really like the fact that you can just press and hold the Q and then it will just go in and um, it will allow you to, allow you to, if I come out of there, press and hold the Q. It'll allow you to go in and change anything you want. So make sure you spend some time. Obviously get used to the camera first, have a play with it if you're new to Fuji, you know, have a think about why. Well, don't rush into it as far as I need to do it the day I got it, but give it some thought because this Q menu is super, super powerful, really, really handy. And uh, it, it's 90% of the time stops you going anywhere near the menu system. And as I said, if you're shooting with more than one Fuji camera, make sure they're all set up exactly the same. So your muscle memory uh, goes straight into it because some events, honestly, it's game changing being able to do that. Now, the other one similar to that is the My Menu. So, if, when you if you've got My Menu set up, set up the XT5 hasn't got it. So, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video because the XT5, um, I, I, I went straight into using it and didn't have much time to set it up. So, if you press the Menu button with when you've got My Menu sorted, when you've got stuff in it, it goes straight into. Um, your menu now i haven't got anything in this one but as soon as you as soon as you press menu it would go straight into that and again it it, it stops you looking for things throughout the menu it's really really handy and it's dead easy to do it literally take two minutes again it you might need to write down the things that you want it might be a case of how to go i use it for dslr mode so as soon as i if i need a flash on there um, or if I'm using an off-camera flash, I need to be able to turn the camera into DSLR mode so it's not giving me exposure preview. Now, the My menu, the first thing I put in there is DSLR mode straight away. It might be things that like um, you don't need on this one, but it might be like the wireless transfer or those sort of settings, IBIS on and off, whatever you want to do. But set up the My, set up the My menu uh, as soon as you can. Give it some thought, pl play around with it, have a think about what you need access to. But again, like the Q menu, it's really, really powerful. Now I've been shooting Fuji for years, so this doesn't really apply to me, but I always make it so that I'm, co I'm comfortable with the ergonomics of back button focusing. So um, for, for me, one of the things I didn't like about the X-H2, although I didn't have much of a play with it, was the dial. So I can't go from single continuous to, to manual like that on the front. Um, and now that's very important to me because at some events I might want to go from single straight to manual and then decide to back button focus. So when you get your camera make sure that you, you you know if you're a single shooter if you're continuous autofocus what however you shoot make sure that you're comfortable and you know that without looking at the camera how you can go to continuous back to manual focus and then when you're manual focus how to back button focus it's really really important and it it transforms your photography it's all part of owning the owning the camera and um and, and the camera being part of you so you literally know how to go from single continuous manual back button without looking at the camera the muscle memory is so so important i don't know what that is <laughs>
a really annoying one for me, and loads of people have it when I do workshops, um, is when they take a photograph, the image preview comes up straight away. So as soon as you take a photograph on the back of your screen, it will show the photograph. Turn that off, because it's basically forcing you to chimp, and you shouldn't be doing it. And at the same time as that, it also auto-rotates. So if you take a picture like that, and, you pre and you're looking at it, and you press play, it actually displays as a, as, a, as a vertical instant thing there. And I hate this facility. I don't know why people have it, so turn that off. You shouldn't really encourage yourself to chimp anyway. It's a really bad habit, especially for street photographers or wedding photographers, events photographers, that sort of thing. You're gonna miss the shot. Uh, but turn it off, just don't chimp. Chimp as little as possible, but definitely when you take a photograph, you don't want any auto playback on there at all. It's diabolical. It's definitely something they should have to turn on, not turn off. Shoot to backup. Now I mentioned that these aren't in any particular order, but this one's dead important. If you've got two card slots on your camera, obviously the X100V doesn't really, gripes me it doesn't actually but um make sure that you've always got oh you've always got a card that you just leave in there so i've got a 256 gig card that i just leave in the back in the second card slot just goes in there and again straight away the camera told me that there's no card in there and then obviously the front one i'll change but the back one stays in the car in the camera that shouldn't come out but it's crucial that the camera doesn't try to write to that card then write to that card I want it to write to that card and that card at the same time. There's also an option that it will write RAW to one and JPEG to the other, so you've got like a, a JPEG backup or something like that. Absolutely useless. The amount of times, even on the X-T5 the other day, I didn't have the, the, the new card wasn't here, it's a brand new card that is, it wasn't here. I did a commercial shoot, that card, when I put it in the computer, wouldn't show any pictures. I literally overnight shit myself. I, I had no way of accessing these commercial images for a wedding, which had like 10 grand's worth of flowers there, right? And then it wasn't until I put the card back in, the photographs were on the card, but they weren't showing when I put them in the computer. And I remembered that you can actually plug the camera into the computer, turn it into USB only mode or something like that, and then the, the files were transferred off the camera straight via USB thing. I literally did not sleep that night because I hadn't got card two in there. Never, if you've got a, if you've got two card slots, my opinion is don't buy a card with one card slots, but I've done it on the Z7 and that one, but make sure you've got that backup and make sure you've got, a, leave a card in, in, in slot two at all times and make sure it's set up to backup, so important. Another thing I change is in the power management option there, you've got performance and it, I've had them when they've arrived on economy, I don't know why. Put it on boost, <laughs> screw battery, get more batteries if you need to, um, even though the new the, the new X-T4 and X-T5 are the new batteries are fantastic. Make sure you're shooting on boost, it makes a massive difference to the whole camera, it doesn't turn off every couple of seconds, it focuses better, everything just seems to be more responsive. Honestly, use boost, right? I don't just, leave boost on right select boost and if you've not on there you should notice a difference straight away with the performance of the camera just it just works better with boost so just make sure boost is selected right here's a bit of a hack for you if you press the q menu it's a good little hack this one if you press the q menu when you first got your camera um you probably have to adjust the diopter if you use the q menu it's the sharpest way of actually putting your camera to your eye and actually using the menu don't adjust anything just look at the menu and then the diopter there which you pull out and adjust. I'm gonna do it because my eyes buggered as it took me ages to get it right. But if you adjust the die up to using the menu, you get a really, really crisp you get nice contrast basically. There's no point using the adapter while you're looking, adjusting the adapter while you're looking at a photograph because the photograph might not have absolute contrast. If you look at the my the my menu, it's a really, really good way of um, of adjusting to get the right sharpness for your eyes. Now, I've already mentioned the histogram, right? The histogram is that little box down there. If you don't know what a histogram is and you're new to photography, uh, wherever that video goes, click on that because histogram is gonna be your best friend. If, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're learning how to use a camera, learn how to use the histogram. It's super, super important. Now, I've also got it so that when I tap the screen, a big histogram comes up. It's handy sometimes, but you know, it's, it's yeah. So it gives you a nice RGB histogram just by tapping the screen. It's the only thing other than uh, auto, um, the touch focus, touch focus, move your AF point, that's another thing you need to change is to make it so that when you touch the screen it doesn't autofocus. Flipping hate that, the Nikon does it. Um, you touch the screen and you can move the focal point around which is fine, but it's the only other thing I use the touch screen for is for the is for the histogram, the big RGB histogram which is really, is, is really handy sometimes. Um, super, super important one as well is the rule of thirds grid. You see that rule of thirds grid? Now, 
I don't think it's on when it comes with the camera, but it's dead easy to find. If you go into the menus, it's going to be in screen setup and it's going to be in screen setup and it's going to be in there somewhere. I don't know. Um, grid. Framing guideline, there it is. Framing guideline, grid nine, dead easy. So yeah, make sure you've got that on. But again, the rule of thirds might not apply to you. It depends what you're shooting. But for me, I, even on my phone camera, I've got a rule of thirds grid on there. I find it so, so handy. So yeah, that's one of the first things that goes on as well. Now, an interesting one is when you buy the camera on the X-T3, when you put anything before the X-T3, should I say, when you put the two second timer on, so if I, t if I put two second timer on, took my photograph then the camera for timed out or whatever like it or auto shut off or if I turn the camera off when I turn the camera back on if it's coming back on <laughs> when I turn it back on that timer that two second timer wouldn't be on now when I bought the X-T5 the two second timer memory wasn't on so if you go into the mem menu there is actually a way of remember timer so make sure you tick that because if you're like me and you use the timer a lot you need to make it so that when you switch the camera on and off, it's on. It doesn't do it on the Nikon Z7 Mark One. It really pisses me off uh, that every time, if the camera t times itself off or whatever like that, as soon as I turn the camera on, I've got to go into the menu and turn the flipping timer back and turn the um, the two second timer back on. It really does annoy me. So make sure that there's an option in the menu to, so that it doesn't remember it, doesn't remember it, and that it does remember it. So make sure if you're going to use the two second timer or any sort of timer, make sure you go into the menu and make and select it so that it remembers your timer. It's really really handy. It's personal this one but the lossless compression it's straight away it's one of the first things i'll put on i've never ever come across any regret whatsoever that um i did a video on it i'll put the video that i uh, that i did on on this recently when i got the xt5 but the lossless compression is absolutely massive um it's a really really it's massive is the wrong choice of word <laughs> it's a really really valuable asset um so you you just get the same quality the same same everything as you would full up full res out the camera but with huge huge compression and it's really really good it doesn't it just means you save so much file um, space now i take i take a lot of photographs i took about 1200 photographs last night at a skate park right so each one of those at 80 megapixel would have been 80 meg would have been absolutely catastrophic so yeah they were down to 40 with that so really 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 love that facility so make sure you've got that on but do some tests on it make sure it's you're happy with the way it works but i really do find that um lossless compression is lossless and is absolutely awesome the final one is actually one that i've actually i've only come to use myself recently and that is the t and c mode now as a as a, a fuji shooter now for probably 10 years i don't know um it's not the way i shoot but sometimes i'll admit that it's been easier to turn the camera so that i've got my iso on the front dial and my shutter speed on the back and then obviously my aperture is still on that ring there now to do that all i've got to do is is go onto my iso dial there and put my iso on c and then if i go over to the t for the shutter speed dial if i put my that one on t and lock them so though those don't set the aperture and the shutter speed anymore so the shutter speed will be on the back dial and that iso will be on the front there and Sometimes that's been really, really handy if I'm, if I'm manually exposing but need to change constantly because adjusting the dial like that sometimes isn't isn't ideal. But whereas if I've got my camera like this, I can literally, you know, I mean, it's probably if you've come from a Canon or a Nikon, you're probably used to that anyway. But it's a really, really handy facility. Um, but that is it. I think there's any, a lot of it does apply to the X100V. Um, the play on the front button does. It didn't on the X100F. I don't think I could... The X-Pro2 wouldn't let me do that either, but that's one of my favourite things, that button on the front there, to, to assign the playback. That is it for this video. So hopefully you found this useful. And if there's any uh, any you disagree with, if I, if I mention anything you don't find works for you, let me know in the comments. And if there's anything you particularly did find useful, let me know as well. Um, but yeah, if you did take anything from this, um, from this video, I really would appreciate if you hopped over and had a look at the zine. Um, thank you so much if you're one of the people that's downloaded already. It really means the world. It's a huge support for the channel. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do more videos like this going forward with you guys supporting me. Thank you so much again. And now I'll let you get out and actually use the damn cameras. <laughs> right. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.